are you having sex education conversations in your home with your girls? If you are, what's the basis for the conversations? Are you coming from the God perspective or all the things you're picking out outside the, in the world? You do know that we are creations of God and everything about sex is the creation of God. And here's the thing, God has a way he wants the next generation and the next generation and the next generation to learn about sex. God has his principles. God has his standards. And I bet you the supreme that the right way to pass on uh, these principles to the next generation. The question is, what are you telling your children? What the conversation you're having in your home right now, does it uphold the values and principles of God? Or is it the permissive culture that the world is passing to us? If you be a child of God, you ought to find out how God wants you to talk with your girls about sex. You don't know how, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is lay your hands on the Sex Education for Girls Bundle, which is based 100% on biblical principles about raising the next generation of children who love God, fear God, and honor God with their bodies. Click the link below and find a way uh, to get the Sex Ed for Girls Bundle and make sure you open that God-led conversation in your home today. So what happens when you are not providing your daughters with the right sex education information? What happens when you are not talking freely about sex? I bet you your daughter is talking to someone else and chances that they're talking to their friend and they're depending on romantic novels, romantic TV shows and social media. How much do you trust those sources? Here is the thing, if your daughter is getting inaccurate information, then it means that they're going to base their decisions on those inaccurate information. And when your daughter makes a wrong decision, consequences always comes. And unfortunately, usually you're part of the consequences of their decision. So I want to help you. I want to make it easier for you. I want your home to be a place where your child and yourself can talk safely and freely about these issues so that you can help them make or shape the decision making process for them when it comes to sex related decisions so all you need to do is look for the link on this video and look for the sex education bundle for girls that i've designed and get started get the spark of amazing conversation going on in your home today all right guys good evening welcome to on Facebook go live good evening everyone welcome to another exciting edition of raising girls weekly as in as I'm talking to you this head guy is doing poop, 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 poop in my head I'm not used to this at all but it's very well deserving welcome beautiful hair uh Dr. Vivian Okoye I'm excited to see you on that side of the dial so if you're watching me right now I need you to know that there are several of you watching right now um, we're currently streaming on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Raising Girls with Irene Bangwell. We're streaming on a Facebook group called Parenting Champions with Irene Bangwell. We're streaming on another Facebook page called um, Irene Bangwell Raising Girls Coach. And of course, we're streaming on Instagram at RaisingGirls.ng. Multiple channels to get the word out because Raising Girls is serious business. <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome. All right, so um, let me start by checking out the people that are online right now. Leave me a comment. Let me know where you're joining me from. Quickly, quickly, share with us. Let me know where you're joining us from. Let me know what page and what city you're joining from. So you can say I'm, I'm, I'm watching from Facebook page or Facebook group or YouTube or Instagram. Let me know where you're joining us from, all right? I'm so happy to be here tonight. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I don't another headgear today. 
Um, all those people asking me about the horn, don't worry about the horn. At least I'm, I'm communicating by wearing this headgear. You get the idea. If you get the idea, then that works. So good evening, everyone. I'm happy, happy, happy to be here. I'm looking out in the comment section to just make sure that you're out there. Let me know where you're watching us from. Let me know where you're watching me from. I'm so excited today. Uh, Madam Okonjo Iwela has... Um, this is not the first time she's giving us something to be grateful and happy about, but um, this is defining. This is a good time to have this conversation. So um, I think it's just the right thing to join in and share in the joy of the moment and celebrate a remarkable woman who continues to make us proud. All right. So let me know where you're watching and joining us from. All right. Nobs Makeover and Beauty. Thank you so much sis, for joining right away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm looking out for comments. I'm looking out for thoughts. Let me hear. I want to know where people are joining from. So even if you're watching replay, please do me the favor and still tell me where you're joining uh, the live streaming from. It makes sense. It, it's awesome to know where you come in from and everything. So good evening, everyone. Tonight is a special night. We're talking about what it takes to raise a 10 over 10 girl. Yep, we're talking about what it takes to raise a 10 over 10 girl. We had a deal that when you come on live today, um, you were to do three things. Come on live. Hey, Nobs Makeover and Beauty Solutions, ABJ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you sure you're not just close by where I am? I could just touch you from where you are. Good evening. Thank you for coming in. We had a deal. Number one, you're going to join the live stream. Number two, you're going to invite a friend. And number three, you're going to don a headgear and take a picture and post it in the thread. And if you're watching um, via Instagram, you're gonna send it to me through my DM and I'm gonna post it on my story later on. Lynn's Fashion Wealth, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm happy to see you here. All right, so what am I missing, all right? So I'm trying to just um, forward something right about now to a, a group of people who should be here. Just give me a moment. Welcome, welcome. Meanwhile, I'm looking out, I'm looking out for where you're joining from. That's exciting. I want to know where you're joining from. And if you had have, have your head, head here, fantastic. Um, put it out there. Put it out there so we can see. All right. Let me see. What am I missing? What am I missing? Okay. All right. I'm not missing much. All right. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right. I'm doing something very quickly. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let me see what's up. Let me see what's happening. Okay, what did I miss? So welcome everyone, okay. So let's keep this going. All right. So I have my first comment for tonight. Someone is joining from you. She's watching from YouTube and she's joining in from the beautiful ancient city of Kano. Fantastic. How is Kano doing tonight, dear? So I'm happy to know that you're able to join us all the way from Kano. Thank you for joining tonight. It's exciting to have you here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for giving me your time tonight. Um, tonight's show is about getting started i have a few announcements at the beginning and then we we'll just get on the conversation for tonight all right welcome 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 as you join in let me know where you're joining from and if you've done your head yeah, share share a selfie with me share a picture of yourself um with the ankara army headgear and i can assure you this will be exciting i'll be grateful to see that all right if you've done your headgear just take a picture post it in the thread let me know why are we wearing the headgear. I think it's just a solidarity thing to remind ourselves that there's something special in every single woman. There's brilliance in girls. And because we are the people that God has given the privilege to raise the next generation of girls, it helps, you know, kind of um, help our consciousness to know that girls are important. Girls are gifted, girls matter, and how we raise them is super, super important. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to have you here, all right? So time is ticking very fast, and I'm eager to share some of the principles that you need to, you know, you need to consider as you go on this journey to raising your girl to be everything that God designed her to be, all right? 
So I'm going to be sharing a few principles in a moment. But before then, I have a few announcements coming, all right? So next week, I have a couple of events that I have the privilege to be speaking in. Uh, by God's grace, I want to share with you some of the information about those events. Um, the very first one is an exciting event being organized by um, a woman that um, is doing remarkable work. She writes for The Guardian. She's hosting a workshop called the Purposeful Parenting Workshop. Welcome, sis. Jane, good to see you. Welcome, sis. So there's the Purposeful Parenting Workshop that is happening next weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday, I think. Purposeful Parenting Workshop. I assure you, it's going to be worth your time. There's a lineup of remarkable experienced coaches coming out and they're going to be teaching from different perspectives. And I can tell you this parenting journey, you can't go alone, all right? You can't go alone. Hey, beautiful hair, she says she's watching from IG and she lives in Lagos. Welcome, beautiful hair, all right? So, so the Purposeful Parenting Workshop holds this weekend, 27th and 28th. There are at least... Um, the 14 speakers I can see, and the fee is 5k. I mean, think about it 14 speakers, engaging conversations, 5,000 hour only. All right, so if you're watching me, you would like to attend this purposeful workshop. Um, purposeful parenting workshop is very simple. All you need to do is send me a DM, I'll give you the details of the organizers. But this is some place that you should be, and I can assure you, 5,000 hour is not a lot of money. Um, to invest in learning about how you can be a better parent. So this event is endorsed and endorsed and endorsed again. I'm going to be speaking there. I'm going to be speaking there. I can assure you we're bringing in value after value after value. You get the idea? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So um, there's going to be a lot of value for everyone who participates, uh, registers to participate in the Purposeful Parenting Workshop. I look forward to seeing you there. Welcome, Auntie Aisha. It's been a while. Happy New Year to you. Had the boys and the princess. I send you my love and everything. So um, I have a number of people coming in. I have a prayer me. Welcome, a prayer me. And Unique Lois, thank you so much for coming in on Instagram. So um, Instagram, I'm seeing people as they come in. So um, how I get to see the people on Facebook and YouTube is when they leave a comment. So leave me a comment. Drop me a picture of yourself in your headgear. And, you know, let's celebrate this moment, okay? So if you're listening to me and you know that, oh, there, and all parents, every parent has this, there's always some place that you could, uh, you know, do, uh, you could improve on. Um, whether it's um, parenting your toddlers, whether it's connecting with your adolescent, all the children, whether it's discipline, whether it's about mentoring your children and nurturing their gift, whatever it is, I'm going to be talking about managing puberty with children, all right? I'm talking about, especially for girls, how do you talk to your girls um, about puberty and all of that? And you know, that's something that um, God has given me a special message to share. So I look forward to having you. It's 5K only. Yep, it's 5K only. I mean, you will learn so much. 14 speakers loaded, I can tell you. So I'm asking you right about now to send me a message, send me a DM, and I'll be able to um, connect you to the organizers so that you can be a part of the Purposeful Parenting Workshop holding next weekend. That's not the only workshop holding next weekend. All right, the second one is actually an amazing conference being held by ZOB, Coach ZOB, all right? Um, my children's favorite art teacher, by the way, okay? So um, she's holding a conference called um, Raising Kingdom Giants, all right? She runs a Facebook group called Train Up a Child, the conference is Raising Kingdom Giants in Today's World. To John, I think it's super simple. You need to look for ZOB on Facebook and search for this flyer that is on the screen right about now. Let me share the bigger flyer so that you can see, just in case you see it somewhere, you can recognize it. Again, you can DM me or you can search for the group Train Up a Child by ZOB and find a way to get in, all right? So Z this particular event, this conference is free. It's holding February 25th, 26th, 27th. Again, I'm going to be speaking there. Again, I'm talking about sex education, biblical perspective. So you should be there, all right? So you should be there. So that's it for now on the conferences I'm speaking on next weekend. Whatever you do, make sure you come in there. So let me welcome a couple of people that just came in. Welcome, Aizim. Um, I don't know if I pronounce her name well. Welcome to Amitope. And then we have Niger to Canada mom. Wow, welcome, ma'am. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to have every single one of us. So what brings us tonight? 
What does it take to raise a 10 over 10 girl? All right. You know, this is a conversation that I can have in my sleep. I mean, it's something I'm pretty passionate about. So tonight is a good night to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to start tonight by telling a story. Um, I hope it blesses you. I hope it inspires you to look at your daughters differently. So um, back in university days, ever before I met my husband, uh, yeah, the story, here the story goes, all right? Um, university days before I met my husband, there was this time of my prayers that um, I just felt a very strong witness by the Holy Spirit talking to me very strongly about the kids I was going to have, you know? And then, you know, there was a lot of strong stuff. The kids will do this, will do that, you do this. I mean, it was, parenting has always been a burden that I carried, even as a teenager, you know. I really wanted to be a great parent. I wanted to be present. I wanted to nurture my kids. I wanted to create an enabling environment for my kids. So it was a place that God periodically spoke to me about. But this particular one, it was really crystal clear, the things he was saying. There's a particular minister of, the, of God that is very, is a global icon. And he was someone I was really listening to at that time. And one day the Holy Spirit said, your, your child will just, will be as, will, will serve me just in the way that man of God is serving. All right. And I, I felt, it was, felt it was an honor. In fact, it took that ministration for me to start saying, man, I'm going to be very deliberate about who I end up being with so that it can be someone that together we can raise the kind of children that God was calling me and telling me I was going to raise. So fast forward, maybe six, seven years later, I'm married now. I'm pregnant with my first child. I've started antenatal. I'm so sure that it's a girl. I'm so sure that it's a boy because I was still working with the things that God told me back in uni days about the kind of kids I was going to have. So I'm still, I'm still really in that element that this is going to be a boy. Trust me, I've even dreamt that I, I had a boy. Then one day um, I go for antenatal, it's time for scan. And it, the scan is just random because then it was already a thing. You could know the gender of your baby prior to delivery and everything. So they are, the guy's looking through and everything. And I saw you're going to have a girl. And I'm like, girl, okay. Then I finished. I go back home, still thinking, well, God said a lot of things to me. And um, he told me about this child I was going to have and everything. You know, maybe it's not this one. Maybe it will be the second one. You know that kind of talk. And then finally, the day of my first child's birth comes. She's a girl. And I hear it right in my spirit. It came out of me. And I said, hmm, I'm going to raise. It came out of me like this. I just said, wow, I get the opportunity to raise a girl the way God intended. That was my first excitement because now I value all children, but I'm thinking maybe the prophecy is not for this one. So I'm like, I'm going to raise a girl child just the way God intended. And a few days down the line, I hear this in my spirit and the Holy Spirit is telling me, I'm like, yeah, you know, you told me these things in uni days and everything. And he says, that's the child. And I said, what do you mean? This is a girl. And he says, exactly, that's the child. And you know, I know I was excited about having a girl child to raise her to be empowered and all of that. But that God witness that said, those great things I spoke to you about, this is the vessel that will carry it. This is the vessel that will birth it. Really started the journey for me. But it wasn't always crystal clear. But from that point, I realized that even in church, we have undermined the birth of girls. Even in church, um, there's a tendency for there to be a celebration. Oh, you had a girl again. Hey, you have a boy, a man of the house. That was sentiments even in the body of Christ. So it's not even a thing when people, even in church, don't expect much from girls. So you can't imagine my joy. Hi, Daisy. You can't imagine my joy realizing that God was saying, I dream big dreams with girls. I do great things through girls. So it dawned on me that what the world keeps pushing about girls being all about marriage is not God's ideal. It's not God's will. It's not how God intended. And when I looked at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, I realized that the first time God met woman, he gave her the same mandate he gave man, which was replenish, dominate. Same mandate. Same mandate. Meaning that when God puts a human being on the earth, 
they have a purpose in him. And when they walk with him, they will fulfill that purpose. And the way God works, it doesn't even matter if it's a female or a male. The grace is just as sufficient for both. So when I started realizing that it was uh, many of the limitations on girls were man-made, I told myself, you know something, I'm going to commit myself to this thing. I'm going to commit myself to this cause and help support um, for us to be able to raise girls that become everything God designed them to be. So when I started talking about the 10 over 10 girl, my whole idea is how do we raise girls to be everything that God designed them to be? How do we raise a girl that has the right sense of value for herself, for God, for the people around her? How do we raise a girl that is wholesome? You get the idea? How do we raise a girl to fulfill God's purpose for her? And someone would say, well, are you against girls getting married? No, but I have seen that when girls are raised with the orientation that they're just here to be married, it does something to their mindset. It does something to their self-perception. It makes boys the ultimate goal of their lives. So you can't be telling your daughter to keep herself for a man. And there's a man talking to her at 19 that wants to have her. Since it is about a man, there's already a man in front of her. So you find girls devalue themselves because they actually think that all that there is to them on earth is being married. And from my work with God this number of years is that the first step for a child, a female child, a male child, is to walk with God, is to find purpose. And it is along that pathway they find the safe partner to be with. So we, sh we ought to make working with God the priority. Priority number one. Priority number two, we ought to make finding purpose, living purposefully. The second priority for our children, whether they're boys, whether they're girls. When people find God and have the right identity and know their purpose and embrace who God has designed them to be, they make far better wholesome decisions than when it is all about marriage. This I have found to be true for girls, all right? So tonight I want to share some of the things that God has inspired me in my work on raising girls from my own personal experiences. I mean, let me even tell you, um, I've seen people, I mean, I have teenagers in church that I pastor and these kids, one of them said um, that, that I'm so bold. I mean, she said, I'm so confident. I'm so, I, this thing just gets true. And I laugh and I say, girl, it's a journey. There was a time when my identity was not where it was. There was a time when, I mean, I was a nervous, I mean, I was, I mean, I, I couldn't do, I couldn't do the things that I do now. And I know the journey I have taken to get to where I am, to get to the point that I'm confident in myself. There are low days, of course, that this way, you know, this is it. But there are rock bottoms you never hit again because there are things you now know. So when I'm talking about raising confident girls and 10 over 10 girls, I know what not being a 10 over 10 girl can make your daughter do. I know the choices your daughter can make that you'll be wondering with all that I taught you. Because sometimes it's not about what you thought, it's what your daughter believes to be true about herself. So on nights like this, I want to talk about raising a girl who thinks the way God wants her to think, who is confident in what God brought out to this earth to do, and who is ready, disciplined enough to go all ahead. Because when I, I listen to the stories of um, women like Mrs. Okonjo Iweala, I realize that they are not miracles. They are not miracles. I mean, I watch a TED talk where Sir Ken Robinson said, oh yeah, you've come out this night, you've listened to Serena Williams, you've listened to all these remarkable people doing great things, you've listened to, uh, probably listened to, you know, really high profile people. But he just needed us to know that they're not exceptions. They're just product of deliberate parenting. So today news has broken, Mrs. Iwiala, now WTO president. Some of you are watching and say, well, she's lucky. Uh, it must be because she's schooled abroad. It must be because her parents were professors, they were enlightened, they had network. And I'm here to tell you that also women and girls who have who had parents with all of those backgrounds, but they, they didn't still make something out of their lives, which means it's not a function of who their parents were, but what their parents did and put in their lives. And this can serve as like a blueprint that you should go back home look at your daughters differently and start the journey to nurturing them into wholesome women. Tonight, we're talking what it takes to raise a 10 over 10 girl. 
So I've told you my first story, which is that I'm thinking that all the prophecies I heard or all the things God put in my heart that was going to come out of my children, I thought oh, he was talking about boys. And then I wake up and to my shock and amazement, I have two daughters and he's telling me, yeah, it's two of them. So it means that God has big dreams for girls. But the question is, can their parents carry those big dreams? Um, welcome, Worry Mom. I'm happy to have you here. Lulu Momsicles, Addy Bless, Glam23. Thank you so much for joining. And someone um, commented from Facebook and said fact. So I can't see your name because you've not given StreamYard the permission. So let me see your name. So there's a link above this video, right? You can click on it. It's streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. So if you click on it, your name will begin to show, all right? But don't let that distract you, right? So tonight I'm talking about a few things that helps you make the mental adjustment, which the first part would be that God created my girls for great things. Marriage is not everything. I <laughs> said, so don't show. Good to see you here, darling. So the first place I want you to make an adjustment is that God created your girls for amazing things. Marriage is a part of it, but marriage is not all of it. So when you prepare your child for only marriage, when you prepare your daughter for just marriage, you, you, you raise a deficient girl. You don't help her see all the things that God designed her for. And I have found out that if you, if you raise her for the whole thing, she makes far better decisions when it comes to marriage. She's more, she's the, she's more wholesome when you do the whole thing than when you focus only on marriage, all right? So what's the first thing I saw? So I, I, I did a little reading about um, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwela's um, upbringing, um, but I don't want to be so fixated on her upbringing. I want to share the principles that work, all right? So tonight, I don't know how many fathers are online right now. I don't know how many fathers are online right now, but if you're a father and you're online, I'd like you to leave a comment and say, I am a father and I am watching right now. If you can do that, it will be remarkable. Um, I want to see, uh, last, last week we had a number of fathers come in. Um, so it was beautiful to have that number of fathers in the house. I, I hope they came back this week. So if you're a father and you're watching, please leave me a comment. A quick comment has come in. So I have Chinea. Hey, sis, watching from, from YouTube. You're always keeping our YouTube channel alive. Thank you, Chinea. I'm so happy to have you here. All right. So let me hear. I have Father in Olaumi. Welcome, sis. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So if you're a father here, please leave me a comment and let me know that I'm a father and I'm watching. I'm still waiting. Haven't seen anyone yet. But here's the, the breaking news. Fathers have a core role in helping their daughters see themselves the way God sees them. Fathers have the core role to show their daughters a wider picture of what life can be. You know, as mothers, you're tempted to do only housekeeping with your daughters. I mean, you're living daily first and foremost. So it's very easy for you to be the one that reminds her to wash plate, wash clothes, clean the house, which, which really matter. But you see that father that sits on the couch, that works, that talks about how he's leading the entire family. Fathers have a critical role in speaking their daughters into big destiny, in helping their daughters see that their lives are more. And every time I say more, people think I make motherhood small. I'm a parenting coach. Motherhood cannot be a small business. It cannot be. But I'm just saying that there is a way, especially in contemporary today, in this our contemporary world, there's a way to be an effective mom and still fulfill your destiny and still pursue your passions and still do the things that you're gifted in. Motherhood is not supposed to be something that takes away the life of, from, takes away your life from you. You get the idea? So I know that at the onset when our children are newly born, like I, I wouldn't be able to do all the things I do now if my kids were toddlers and much younger, I wouldn't. But then it's a phase and there's a time to move on. The reason this is critical is because the next generation has a totally different body language from us. The next generation is exhausted by the way we, we make it look as if once you start parenting, your life is over. They want different. So we need to position to actually educate them on how they can win at home and they can win at work. Otherwise, we're going to have a bunch of children in our hands who don't want to have kids because they don't like what motherhood did to us. I want to say that again. The next generation 
don't like how we make motherhood look. They don't like how exhausting it is. They don't like how overwhelmed we are. So you find girls saying, is this it? Is this what it means to be a mom? And I'm saying, nope. We have the responsibility to bring beauty and color to it. And part of the responsibility on us is to live our lives wholesomely, fully, so that our children can see the beauty in it. And then even by the time I'm looking at myself, I'm seeing that God is calling me to do this and he's calling me to do that. And I know God is a God of order. So he's telling me that God doesn't always call everyone to say, you don't do anything, just focus on your kids. Sometimes, in many cases, it's calling women to work in the corporate work. I mean, tell me about um, Ibuko Awoshika, for instance. She has a role to play in enterprise. What if she just said, no, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to be a mom. So I'm, I'm telling you that the next generation will not accept our model or our picture of motherhood. And so we need to start even with the girls, start reminding them that, oh, no, 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 this is not all that there is to your life. There's even a lot more. All right? The second thing I want to bring at this point is that this is the time to start raising girls with faith values. You know? Yes, we need to live our lives wholesomely. Yes. This is the time to start raising girls with faith values. In fact, I was looking through my book yesterday. I was doing like a review of a particular place and I saw where I had written. I had written that the kids that we're raising in church want more out of their lives but we usually parent them in a laid back way. We parent them as if we're afraid of them experiencing the world. Unfortunately, the children in the world are wild. They're going out there to achieve something. I mean, they're doing a lot of things. I mean, I read um, a, news, uh, a news headline yeah, two, three days ago where a particular celebrity in the US um, who has a lipstick or so brand was the first black owned business to be valued at a billion dollars. Your daughters want those kind of trophies. But the thing is, we're always pushing them back. We have a false sense of humility. My pastor calls it humility. We don't prepare our girls to get into the world and excel. We try to shield them from the world. So it drives rebellion. They think men, they have to, they have to break all the rules and leave home and be wild to excel. And if you want your daughter to be that 10 over 10 girl that God designed for her to be, it's time to give her the, the building blocks for excelling in life, for creating her own wealth. So she doesn't leave home and think that the world has the way to succeed. So you want to raise a 10 over 10 girl, put skills on her hand, give her faith values that help her see that God wants her to excel too. You know, I don't know if, you, if, if you're getting the point of what I'm making, please leave me a comment. Do you get the idea? There's, a, there's, a, there's an energy of rebellion coming and it's going to move kids that were raised in even Christian homes outside of the values of the church. And part of why they're living is because of the laid back way in which we're raising them. We're not raising them for exploits. We're raising them we're raising them as if we're shielding them. So the world is so attractive. So there's going to be a rebellion coming. Already we're seeing the rebellion with people saying, stop telling women what to do with their bodies. You know, those kind of things. It's coming. And when your girl begins to look for success, by all means, there's going to be a problem. At this point, I like to state very categorically that a 10 over 10 girl is not a successful girl. She's a girl who is succeeding in what God has called her to do. Because there's all kinds of success. I don't represent all kinds of success. I represent success at the center of the will of God. I represent, for me, the 10 over 10 girl is a girl who is succeeding at what God has called her to be. And she's doing this side by side with God. Because success by all means is not a 10 over 10 girl. I'm not going to jump on bandwagon for every girl that succeeds no i don't want girls to succeed as much as possible but irene bangwell i stand for girls who succeed in the center of god's will for their lives they will not compromise to see success but here's the thing as the church as the body of christ we need to sit still and reappraise how we are raising girls for the future if we're raising girls to be laid back 
rebellion is coming. They're going to kick at us and get out. But if we raise them to know that, oh, God called you to be salt. God called you to be light. You're going to get into the world. You're going to shine. You're going to make a difference. You're going to be a billionaire. You're going to make impact. You're going to solve a problem. The Bible promises of prosperity is not a male gender prophecy. It applies to you as well. I mean, it took marrying my husband for this thing to wake up in my brain. For my husband to tell me, baby, the, the, the promises of prosperity in the word applies to men as much as it applies to women. So you have to step out there and pick your God-given assignment and fire. So if we raise girls and we keep shielding them from the world without helping them position the way God wants them positioned, we're going to lose. Here's the thing. You remember when I started, I said, God told me certain things about the children I'll have. And when they were girls, he told me it's the same people, which means all the limitations that you see in the world today that make you think that if your daughter is ambitious, if your daughter has a goal, start a business early, um, then she's too much. That thing that makes you feel is too much is Satan designed. It's man-made. It's, it's to limit your daughter so that she thinks that the only way she can succeed is to rebel against God. You get the idea? You remember the conversation in the garden? Um, the serpent asked Eve, did he really say you will be just as wise as him? Meanwhile, she was already wise as him. So when we try to hold girls back, rebellion becomes attractive because it is... It is an innate desire in humans that God put for them to want success. Your daughters want success. But if you make it all about men, all about marriage, they're going to think that God has a problem with their success. Meanwhile, God designed for them to succeed. So get this. The first position is stop thinking that God made your daughters to marry alone. Some of your daughters are carrying wicked ideas, wicked talent, wicked gift. The question is, are you paying attention or are you so focused on them marrying that you can't see that your daughter has a God-ordained assignment on the earth? You get the idea? So first for me is, you need to make an adjustment in your mind and know that my daughter is carrying crazy. So one of my daughters has a passion to be a political leader. She keeps calling that office and I keep telling her baby is politics. And she says, no, I don't want to do politics. I said, well, the only route to that path is politics. So we're going to start getting you books on political leadership. Let me give you a perspective. Her father and I will not go into politics for the life of us, but we recognize that we are channels, that God brings instrument on assignment through us. And when our children hit this world, at some point, they have to find what God designed them to be. And it will not be about what we like and what we don't like. It will be about what he has wired them to do. We are stewards. We nurture. We don't configure. We nurture. So they arrive with what they arrive. And we begin to nurture. You get the idea? So you need to make an adjustment. I've said two things already. Number one, fathers need to call out greatness in their daughters. Fathers need to tell their daughters that they're remarkable. God has designed them for success. Fathers need to call it out of their daughters. Fathers need to call it out of, for their daughters. Meanwhile, let me give you a quick tip. It is easy for fathers to call out greatness out of their daughters if they're calling out greatness out of their wives. It's so easy for my husband to talk to my daughters about anything because like right now they're snuggling up with him or somewhere everybody knows mommy's life everybody knows mommy's teaching mommy's writing books that is supporting i mean the other day i walked all the way to what time almost morning wanted to go and have a bath to go and drop the kids at school and my husband came out and said no baby let me go and drop them they see him support that ministry so because he supports the ministry it's a natural flow for my children to know that oh girls can so tip number one, fathers need to show up and call out the greatness in their children. Number two, we need to start, we need to stop giving girls laid back values. Those values that make them think that they're meant to be small, greatness cannot come out of them, and they think it's a Bible thing, they think it's a, a Christian thing. Meanwhile, it's all our fears and all the man-made stereotypes and everything. We need to overcome them. But you want to raise it a 10 over 10 girl? Be a father that calls out greatness. Number two, be a parent that recognizes that your daughter is on earth for a reason and God made her for a lot of things and that inbuilt and your work is to nurture it. Now, if you've, if you've done these two things, meaning if you've adjusted in your mind that that girl in your house has great destiny, then you're really ready to parent her. 
Number one, so father's core greatness. Number two, parents make a mental adjustment. Let tell yourself, God made my daughter to be salt and light, not of my home, not of my village, of the earth, light of the world. My daughter was made to be light of the world. Interestingly, the Bible says that we will lend to nations. So I, I've, I've started talking about it in my mind that God made my daughters to lend to nations. I remember when my husband started looking at me, say, baby, you're going to be so rich. You're going to be richer than I. And I would say, baby, please don't say that because of my own insecurity to say, hey, a woman has to be less so that the husband can, you know, all those things. And he said, baby, it cannot happen in this home. There are things you carry, you must birth it, you must trade with it, you must bring it out, you must serve the world, and you must be duly rewarded. I remember when I used to try to do small, small projects, and my husband would come and say, baby, I don't know why you put so much energy to little things. Why don't you, why don't you fire this thing on scaled project? Why don't you be, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you do something mega, baby? The, the same energy you're using to pursue these small, 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 small things, you can do something big with it, all right? So we've established number one and two. Fathers, call out the greatness. Number two, let your children know, your girls, your boys, but tonight we're talking girls, let your, because boys don't even have this problem. Boys know that they're going to be leaders. I mean, that's how they are raised. Welcome, Yemzia Day. Welcome, Damina beauty home yes adi blesses i totally get you thank you so much sis thank you you get the idea boys already feel like they're going to be leaders all right but girls don't so you need to you need to you need to adjust in your mind so that your language and posture changes um a few months ago i read a joke about this little girl that went to school and told a group of boys in her class that she was going to be governor and one of the boys said no that's for boys she said, okay, then I'll be president. That's a child that is growing up. That's a girl that is growing up with no limitations in her head. I remember speaking at Parents Summit Africa in 2019, and I said, my daughters are not aware of the difference between men and women in terms, in terms of achievement. I just told them that God made mankind, mankind, which is a combination of women and men for greatness. They have a kingdom assignment. They have kingdom purpose, and he has put talents and gifts inside of them from which they will draw from to serve the world. So my girls are just going, they're just flying blind, blind of all kinds of limiting beliefs. So if you can, if you can change in your own mind, your posture towards parenting them will be different. So having done this first, what are the things you should start doing with your girls? Number one, teach your girls to dream. Encourage your girls to have big dreams. Let them have big dreams, scrapbooks, do vision board activities at home. What's a vision board activity? Sit down with your kids to dream far and wide. Even if they're babies, what would you like to be? You know, I built in a bit of this into the Body Smart Girl Bundle because when girls have a big picture of their future, they honor who they are. They have a sense of personal dignity and direction. There are choices they will not make because there's a way they perceive themselves. You get the idea? So if you're getting value, let me hear you. Hey, Abimbola Funsha, thank you for coming. She said, be a parent that calls out greatness in your child. Profound. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. So the next step is get your girls to dream big dreams. Now there's something in front of us. We have we have things to work with. Ngozi Okonjo Wala has achieved so much, right? Something remarkable. Look for her. Look for look for women in all all, all sectors. There's a lot of recovery in medicine. Um there is um, Ibuka Woshika in finance. Um, there's Udo Konjo in real estate. Look for remarkable women and tell their stories to your girls. Tell, tell your stories, their stories to your girls and encourage your girls to dream. You get the idea? Encourage your girls to dream, all right? Encourage your girls to dream in that line. Talk to, you know, you get, you get the point of, talk about other women in, in Nigeria and particularly about Nigeria because this is home. Many of these people have faced some of the challenges we face or similar um, reality uh, uh, as we do. So talk to your girls about remarkable women doing great stuff. I mean, talk about the lady that, that is doing maternity kit. Talk to your girls about them, then tell them to dream. Tell them to dream, tell them to dream, tell them to dream. And then the family has to be a core supportive place. I know in Africa, we, we, we come from extended families where, um, Sometimes extended family members want to lump their own ideas on top of what you're trying to do. So maybe when your grand, when your parents are around and grandparents, they keep talking about won't husband. Try to tell everybody, oh, we don't talk about this with the kids. 
So for instance, I mean, my family, everybody knows that. The things you don't talk with my girls about, you don't, the things you don't talk to them about. Um, so you can't tell them to go and clean that one day to clean their room, that one day they're going to be wives. Don't they need clean rooms, clean rooms themselves? So I would say, no, 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 no. They, they don't do it for anyone. They don't even clean their rooms for me. They clean their rooms because they are people of honor. They deserve a clean space and that's how they honor themselves. You get the idea? So, you, you know, we put that in perspective. You get the idea? So you need to manage how that happens. You have to have a language in your home that encourages your children to step out and be everything. There are several languages we use. So create a language code. So your children should have, encourage your girls to have the right vision. Encourage your girls, um, the family, to have the right you know, um, view on how they relate to their girls. People shouldn't talk all these husband things around your girls. Number three, build a language code that tells your girls they are more. In my home, is leaders. So when my girls misbehave or do something they shouldn't have done, I look them straight in the face and say, man, you're a leader you're going to act like one. And when they ask me, what does it mean to be a leader? I say, you start by leading yourself. You, 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 you get yourself to do what you need to do when you need to do it without needing someone externally to tell you. That's what it means to be a leader. So lead yourself, make the decisions that matter. Think before you make a decision. So we have that language culture. Plus in the house, they know that we don't talk anyhow. I mean, the other day I was driving home with the kids from school. There was very this very reckless driver in front of us. I didn't know when I said, Nigerians, we are so, I, I don't know what I said. Nigerians are so impatient or something. Or it, I said something about being irresponsible or something. I don't remember the language I used. And she asked me, why am I using we? I said, well, we're all Nigerians now. Nigeria is people, the, the behavior, what we do and everything. She not said, but the Bangles are not. So why did you include us? I said, well, we are just a, we're a small number. But I felt good that my nine-year-old could look at me and say, but that doesn't include the Bangles. The Bangles are not like that. So in my head, I'm like, okay, so that has sunk. One of the core visions of my family is to be at the forefront of social change, to do social good to support each other to do social good. So it's not unusual for the conversation in the house to be about, oh, there's a challenge we're seeing. Even the girl, <laughs> Irene Okonda, yes, I mean, I can borrow that today. <laughs> Welcome, TJ, darling. Good to have you. Thanks for coming. You know, it's not unusual for us to sit down at home and the girls are brainstorming. Maybe they talk about something that is happening in school. And instead of sitting down to gossip and gossip and, and criticize people, I start telling them, so what's the way forward? What are you going to do about it? So because social good is a family culture that we have. The other thing is, it's time to start building, raising disciplined children. You want your daughter to be a 10 over 10 girl, then she has to be disciplined. And the first place she has to start exercising discipline is with her mouth what she says to herself, to other people in different situations matter. Raise your girls, especially because I'm talking biblical parenting here, raise your girls to create with words. So my daughters know that you speak what you want to see. Raise girls who are intentional with words because one of the biggest undoings of the woman race is words. We, we talk carelessly, we tear at each other. So the 10 over 10 girl has to not have time for that. All right, the 10 over 10 girl has to not have time for that. They have to use their words to create their world. They have to use their words to honor people because the 10 over 10 girl is not an isolated girl. How she makes people feel around her determines where her name will be mentioned. Now, because you are conscious that your daughter is created for big things, you're going to, be more deliberate about teaching her how to live a good taste when she meets people of different, you know, you know, in different climes. And then you have to be deliberate about opportunities that your daughter is given to speak, to take the platform, to speak to people. Um, towards the end of last year, we got an invitation from the Embassy of Finland and She Forum Africa. They needed my first daughter to come speak on girl issues. And she calls me to say, Mom. What's the theme? I said, that, you know, the whole thing was about getting girls into school and we talked about it. And I said, baby, I won't let you just go and talk like that. Sit down and think about 
Why am I being asked to talk about this? I need you to know that you're speaking for a number of girls. So even if what you're speaking about is not your reality, you have to paint their picture right so that they can get the right support. Because of that, in my home, there's a frame in my parlor written, it's just still wholesome words only. And on top of it is written, God's live here. Because the biblical principle is that we speak like gods. So I pass it on to my children. They make declarations on themselves about their future. You get the idea? I don't joke with what comes out of their mouth. I don't joke with it. Like they can't talk crap. Now, let me give you perspective. I have a second daughter who has my side of like i come from my family side we have a bit of humor and you know the thing with humor is that it can sometimes become derogatory that's how i was raised that's how i grew up but as i grew up i had to i had to coach myself to say girl you're a leader god is counting on you to do a number of things you can't talk carelessly so i have is my second daughter has that humor side of us so it means that I have to stay like this. And when she wants to go, I have to bring her back. And right now she's seven. There are things that won't even occur to her. In fact, sometimes she wants to say something and she say, mommy, if I say it, it's, it will not be right. And I'll tell her good. Because the whole goal is you're raising a 10 over 10 girl. She's going to take platforms and podiums and speak on issues and solve problems. She can't talk anyhow. She can't talk any, she cannot talk anyhow. I don't fall, I don't subscribe to the be yourself, say it as it is. My children know that if there's a problem and they don't feel good about it, we sit on the table, we talk about what the problem is, but in the same way we're talking about the problem, we're not attacking anyone, we're not using derogatory words, we're talking about, well, when you did this, it made me feel like this, I was concerned about this. We deal with the issue, we deal with learning about how actions affect one another so that we actually take corrections. But to tear people apart in order to resolve issues, it's not, a, it's not, it's not the culture. It's not the culture. So if you're a parent listening to me and you throw words around, if you believe that your daughter will take platforms, even if she's going to be an activist that needs to raise her voice, we will train her to be an orator, to articulate herself, to engage people with words, but we will not allow her to tear down her life with words. So for example, um, many girls say very negative things about themselves. You don't want to do that. You don't want to raise a daughter who does that. You want to teach, you want to correct, you want to teach them how to say what they want to see in themselves. So for instance, I would expect my daughter to say, I see myself becoming more patient instead of saying I'm such an impatient person. I see myself becoming more patient. I I'm learning to be more patient because it's the making of the 10 over 10 girl. What were you thinking? She's not anyhow girl. That's why she's not a dime a dozen. Do you get? She's not regular and raising her is different. Raising her challenges you, mother and father, to become better people. Don't forget, she's going to do what you didn't do in your time. So it means that it cannot be the same way you were parented to get to where you are, that you will parent her to get, get to where God is taking her. So you're following, right? So you're, you're giving her vision. You're ensuring that the family cultures and the language in your home is right. Now we're talking about building habits. I've started with words. But I'm also going to start talking about habits like studying, picking her books to read. A 10 over 10 girl is informed. I don't know if anyone has seen Ngozi Okonjo in Weala's citation. Have you seen it? Everybody's not going to be a nerd. Everybody's not going to be like you are, but they are called for something. So in whatever it is they are called for, raise your daughters to be the best. Raise them to be informed, to have access to contemporary information, to be able to think around whatever it is they're called to do. You have a daughter who wants to dance. Let her read dancing books. You get the idea? Let them become knowledge bases. 10 over 10 girls are not regular. What entertains other girls don't entertain them. They can't sit down and be laughing at empty jokes on a work day. They are not exchanging WhatsApp of gossip and they're not on blog gossip blogs. All right. I remember when I first met my husband and he asked me, did you buy the paper yesterday? I said, newspaper. Am I supposed to be buying newspaper? I said, no, if you see yourself as a leader, don't you want to know what's happening in government? It's in reading newspapers that you see the opportunity for the kind of work that you do. Do you understand? 10 over 10 girls are not accidents. 
They are not mistakes. They are not miracles. They are deliberate parenting. Some of the people I have met that remarkable women that have done great stuff said when their fathers used to buy newspapers, they used to hand over to them to read. The father will buy newspaper, remove a leaf for them to read. Some, they'll give it to them for puzzles. And many of them, language change. So if you're watching me and you say, my child is not the reading type, you missed it. She doesn't need to be the reading type. She can be nurtured to become the reading type. So you have to start building the right habits. And then I want to also talk about another thing you need to start focusing on, your daughter's gifts and talents. As an educator, I, don't, I will never stop talking about this. See, when it is end of term and you're giving your children's results, forget about average percentage. Forget about position. Those things are distracting. Look back into the spreadsheet and see places where your daughter is showing strength. It doesn't need to be math and English. Look for where your daughter is showing strength. I had to foster daughters who lived with me. Yes, sis, get your daughter to read things that are of interest to them. I want her to walk up to a place that she went to do dancing audition and everybody's doing dancing, dancing, and they ask her a question, where did it start for you? And instead of saying, I started dancing at three years old, she said, well, like so, 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 so person in Italy in 1817, she got interested in dancing because of this. And I think I feel that way too. Even the organizers will know that if you give this one the opportunity, it would take the vision far. So give, give, 10 over 10 girls are extra. You get the idea? That extra vibe, that extra resource and everything. You get the idea? So I was saying something. So yes, Abimbola, I agree with you. I was saying something that when you get results sheets, leave average alone. There is loaded insight in spreadsheets. So I had two foster daughters living with me, right, at the time. And one of them loved to cook. I could see that every time you asked her to cook, she came alive. So what I did for her was every last thing they demanded for her in home management, I would give her. Even if it, it wasn't convenient, I made sure she had the resource for everything. I knew she came alive when she was in the kitchen. When she made mistakes, when she cooked and got something, she would try to remember what it was it, it, that made her do it. It was unique to me because I don't share the same passion. Right, I don't share the same passion, but I knew it was a thing and I supported her. Neko and Wayek result comes out. Guess where she has A's? Home management and home economics. Do you know that that's an insight on what you should do with the child? When you compare your daughters, I don't, you cannot be, see, if you want to give birth for your daughter to become a 10 over 10 girl, you can't compare her. She's purpose packed. When God sent her to you, he sent her to you for exploit. She's purpose packed. She's not like any other child on the earth. So you're not benchmarking her and anybody. You're just looking at the manual that is the word and what is in front of you and what it is expressing and you're nurturing from there. The second one can argue for Africa. If she was still with me, I would expect that girl to get into media. She could talk. She could argue. Sometimes she would argue at the wrong time. But I knew there was something. I knew she could write. I knew she had potential to speak. I knew she could take the crowd. So one time in church, she had to do a debate. Okay, she was in a panel where they were talking. When it got to her turn to talk about drug use, you needed to see the way she talked. And talk. Meanwhile, she had just interacted with an article. So she was featured on AIT, was so excited and everything. The next year, she went to do a debate. Will, can, can Nigeria work? Something like that. She was in SS3. The opponent, on the other hand, was an undergraduate in university. They debated until the boy said she wins. Then Wayek and Neko came out. Civic education, A. Civic education, A. That's a, that's a social worker. Her mind can handle government and civic conversations. You will not, you're not paying attention to what is coming naturally to her. You're fighting for what is not. It is okay to get her support, to get her math and English and all of that, because sometimes children underperform academically because they don't have the right support. But imagine where she's excelling even when the support is not perfect. 
She has interest in agriculture. She has interest. They're excelling in different places. Look to this night. Go and pick your children's old result sheet and look for the trends. Those things are pointing you to what your daughter will excel in. I don't know if what I read is true, but that Ngozi Okonjo Wella started out in the sciences and one day out of interest, she stumbled on economics materials and started consuming it and her parents let her. Her parents did not say, you have to finish medical school. Her parents let her. The other day I came across um, an Instagram wealth coach who, is a, who, who trained as a medical doctor but decided to start working on economics and money issues. It means when your children decide to pivot, it's okay. Excuse me. Do you understand me? So look at what is happening around you. Look at her results differently. Take comparison out. She's not like any other. Remember, I've talked about get her reading, build her skills. The other part is put her in places where she can learn. Put her in places and experiences where she can soak in and learn and learn and learn and learn. The next thing, allow her to talk. Allow her to share opinion. I tell you people, allow girls to contribute. You want to decide what to eat or where to go or how to plan a surprise. Let your girls be used to hearing their own voices. Let them be used to the recommendations they make that the family is taking it. I'll give them opportunity to advise mommy and daddy. It helps them start building confidence in their own voices. You know, if Ngozi was busy waiting for people to come and handpick her and celebrate her, she wouldn't have run for WTO. So the other thing is, we're now raising girls who are equipped but don't have the confidence to show up. They don't have the confidence to speak up. And usually the programming is from home. We grew up with our parents. It's when I talk, you can't talk. So now we're passing on to children for a generation that God needs to talk. You can teach them how to talk respectfully, but make sure they talk. Raise your daughters to speak up. When opportunities come, allow your children to participate. Push them to participate. All right? Build their skill. Invest in them. I mean, I watched a video some years, um, some months back, where a father set up a dancing studio for his daughter at home. The things that are, they are passionate about, invest in it. Two more points. Expose them to wealth creation principles. You know, I started with give her big dreams. Show her the pathway to wealth creation. Sign up for financial education programs for your kids. Talk about money. We, we, we didn't grow up hearing about money. Nine, see, where, see where we are. Talk to them about creating money. Wealth creation, investment, solving problems, pricing, all of these things, how technology works as a tool. Talk to them. Many of your children are going to, to lead, found Fortune 500 companies. Prepare them for that level of excellence. Prepare them for that level of excellence. Build their critical thinking skills, all right? You know, one of the things I have seen in the course of my work is how intelligent girls make some of the poorest choices because we're just making them book brilliant but not life brilliant. If you're still here, leave me a comment. I'm saying people coming in, coming in. Kate Glam, welcome. Raina Sense, welcome. Worry Mom, yes, so we know to comparison. So if you're here, you're getting value, please leave me a comment and tell me I am getting value. Let me know that you're getting value. Let me know you're getting value. Leave me a comment. Tell me one sentence you've heard. Kate Glam, so I'm so glad to have you in my life. Mm, thank you so much, sis. So leave me a comment. If you're hearing me and you've gotten value, leave me a comment. Thank you so much, Kate Glam. I just saw Bim Shokweju. Thank you for coming in as well. Leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. And if you've done your scarf, post it, post it, post it, post it. You get the idea? I see a lot of little girls, brilliant, but book brilliant. Not life brilliant. They're not exposed. Um, anything can excite them, you know? Thank you so much. Someone just posted that they're getting value. Thank you so much. Even if you're watching replay, you can put hashtag and say, yes, I'm getting value. Deborah, my lovely, lovely, lovely. Good to see you, sis. Thank you so much. You said you're getting value as well. Thank you. Then, so you find this little girls. Welcome, sis. You find these little girls, book brilliant, but life dumb. Seven A's, life dumb. Seven A's, 
but a boy that is barely having one credit is making them feel less than they should. What's up? What's up with that? What are we doing? We're not having the right conversations with our girls. Our girls are not thinking on their feet because the orientation is somebody is going to marry you and take your pains away. You that is married, have they taken your pains away? Did the prince save you? You're still right here with life, trying to find out your own purpose, trying to find out what your gifts are, trying to find out how you can also make your own money because you're seeing that it's even so burdensome to live the entire family experience on the shoulder of one person. You that got married and had the children, has it been a smooth sail for you? What are the things, the places you've established or, or, or achieved the most success? What are the things that helped you get there? Have these conversations. So for instance, one of the things that has really helped me is discovering and accepting that God made me unique in the same way he made you unique. I have gifts, I have talent, I am, I am as good as anyone else to step out and serve the world with it. The world needs to hear my voice. The world needs to experience my solutions. Those are the things you need to pass on to your girls. And when it comes to sex education, my brain just blows. In this process of working with kids since 2008, you'll be hearing the silliest reasons why girls are just throwing themselves away. The silliest reasons. Because again, we're not telling them that God has big dreams for them. When you tell girls to seek the will of God, they think that God is going to come up with a boring alternative where there'll be no money, where there'll be no, they won't look fashionable, they won't be beautiful, it's going to be this and that. They don't realize that the, the, the maddest excitement, the sweetest adventure is in God. Shouldn't we be teaching them that? One area I've seen our girls struggle and struggle is sex education because we're not having the right conversations with them. A 10 over 10 girl is a woman of honor. She doesn't need prayer point for her husband to support her. She won't even marry one that will not go with her. See, when you raise an enlightened girl, she even makes dating decisions differently. You need to see how I have written it in the doodle book for girls where they, they paint their big dreams. They talk about what they want to achieve. They, they find the God voice in their purpose so that when they are done, when a man walks up to them, because they will, your daughter is checking, what's his God perspective on life? I have a purpose. Is he willing for me to go on that purpose with him? I told myself many years ago, that I will not be able to use torchlight and do fasting when my children want to get married. So first, I want to teach them to recognize God's voice. Number two, I want to raise them to be so in tune with who God has made them to be that when people walk into their lives, they know when the people don't belong there. You get the idea? That fear you have that if your daughter becomes ambitious, she won't find the right partner. It's not God ordained because the right partner wants to see her live full. Anybody that cannot be with her to experience the fullness of what God has put inside her is not the right partner. Yes, it cannot be the right partner because God gave her the assignment and God brings the partner. So the partner should partner with her to bring what God has put in her. Then she too should partner with God to put out what, to help the man to bring out what God has put inside them. So it's mutual. The guy has a purpose. She has a purpose. They can work together to support each other maximally. That's what it should look like. That's why I'm passionate about raising girls who are no longer compromising with their bodies. Girls who honor God with their bodies. I don't care what the excuses are, but I want to close those gaps. I want to make Jesus attractive to the next generation. I want to make purity hip to the next generation. Because when our girls surrender to God, Ngozi's testimony is small. You know, God, eh? 
he doesn't he doesn't have scarcity of big of good news right he, there's no scarcity of good news he can do anything with your daughter if she surrendered and your daughter has the capacity to be surrendered to God. The question is, are you going to talk to, are you, are you ready to take her on the pathway that God wants her to go? Remember, number one, she has to see that God has big dreams for her and she can count on him. Then you want to sit her through to learn about body, sex, relationship, marriage, God's perspective. You think God can leave you, leave you halfway? He won't leave you halfway. He will walk you through the process. How do I know for one, as, I'm, as I've been working on this body smart bundle that I designed for sex education, I know how many things I've heard that my brain, I'm like, whoa, I was talking to my friend yesterday about how overwhelmed I've been in the last couple of days. I'm hearing things, I'm relieving moments, I'm going back to my childhood, I'm relieving moments. It's as if the Holy Spirit is saying, you should have made this turn, you should have made that turn. I mean, it's all coming back to me as I'm doing this bundle. That's how I know that God has yes god has big dreams for your girls but your girls have to walk with him purity has to be a core the world is telling us that the next generation will not be pure nope they don't have the breaking news we have the breaking news because we are their parents we have a god that is parenting along with us on this journey so it means that you can't keep giving excuses no, you can't keep giving excuses about, oh, I'm not talking to my children about sex because I don't know what to say. That chapter is over. A 10 over 10 girl is not sleeping around. Quote me, a 10 over 10 girl is not sleeping around. A 10 over 10 girl is not sleeping around. So the first thing is we have to raise girls who will not sleep around. Point number one. Point number two, we have to raise girls that are informed enough and they have the right information that they're not exposed to abuse of any kind. So we are not going to joke with that part. I remember when the Holy Spirit started walking me through this thing. He said, look, when girls are abused, it's harder for them to understand the love of God. Because the first thing that comes to their mind is, how could God love me and let this happen? Mamas, it's time for us to provide quality information on these things to our girls so they can protect themselves. The companies our daughter should not even be in. Do you understand? But they need to even know beyond your rules and regulation. Why? How should they go about it? What if they like a girlfriend that is a bad influence? What do they do about it? I've covered it in my body's my bundle. I know that God is counting on us. I know that God is counting. Let me ask you people. Can you imagine with the fight that goes your country real I went through? If that woman has some sort of a scandal that had anything to do with immorality. Do you not think that the people that didn't want her to get into WTO, shouldn't it have mistakenly gone viral? It would. It would. So think about it this way. God has big dreams for your daughter and he wants her to work in it. But Satan wants her to mess up so that when it's time for her to take that stage, somebody brings it out. And the world is a hypocrite. They tell the girls to do as she pleases. Then they shame her when she does. Because you cannot trust the world. The only person we can trust is God. I tell you, everywhere for bust. Look at all the things they did to stop her. And somebody is telling me, leave anyhow. No, my girls have assignment. My work is to make sure that that part of their life is covered. They know how to work with God. They know how to listen to him. They know how to honor their bodies. Then I fire their gift and talent to go and be everything God has designed them to be. And guess what? Then we shut the devil up in the process. So are you still going to keep making excuses about not knowing what to say to your girls when it comes to sex? Because 10 over 10 girls are not sleeping around. And if you want that to be your girl, you have to be ready to pray, to teach, to show, to support. So if you're listening to me right now and you would like to take advantage of the pre-order of my Body Smart Bundle, very simple. Send me a DM. Send me a DM. It's 11500 naira right now and there are 11 products inside of it for girls of all ages. There's a parenting book for you. There are doodle books for your girls of different ages. The doodle books take your girls on this journey. 
the dreaming journey. I shared one part of the doodle yesterday, um, last, um, last week or two, where one of the pages for the 15 year old says, how much money do you want to be worth by so 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 age in 10 years? You get the idea? Yes, it's God. But here's the thing, worry mom, right? It's a lot of work, but God is bringing helpers. God is bringing different kinds of helpers along the way. For instance, I'm sitting down here. I may help to make the work easy. If when, when the Body Smart Bundle hits your house, you would know how much work went into it. Personally, if someone did that work for me, I'll be grateful. But I'm seeing that God is calling different people at, you know, at different points to bring you help. Receive the help. Don't overanalyze it. Don't do what your parents did. What our parents did brought us here. Here is not where we want our girls to be. There is where we want our girls to be. So we need everything that would help us take our girls there. You get the idea? So right now, the Body Smart Bundle, the Body Smart Girl Bundle is going on a pre-order discount of 11500 naira. It's very simple. Send me a DM. Send me a DM. And we'll make sure we, uh, you, you, you book, you reserve your own copy and everything. So yes, send me a DM and let's get talking. So I'm going to just stop. I want to hear questions, questions. We've taken a lot of time already, no problem. But just leave me questions. What questions do you have? I'm happy to answer. Question, 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 question. So I still have five people on Instagram. I've had quite a number of people on Instagram tonight. I'm very grateful. I've had quite a number of people on YouTube, on Facebook, and different channels on Facebook. I'm really, really grateful. So right now, I want to take questions. I also want to see if I have comments that didn't feed into StreamYard. All right, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, all right? I think I've captured as much as I could, all right? So right about now, let me see questions. It's not an ebook, sis. It's hard copy. There are actually, there's a parenting book, hard copy. The doodle books for the girls is all hard copy, all right? And then we have con conversation cards. The way the conversation cards work is, there's the parent's card and there's a child's card. The child's card has questions about body, puberty, self-esteem. It has different questions. Safety. Then the mother's side, the parent's side. Sorry, I keep using mother. The parent's card now has answers. So your daughter will ask you a question. You have the card that has the answer. But you're not supposed to stop at the answers. You're supposed to start having... <laughs> you're not supposed to just stop at the answers. It's supposed to help you build conversation. All right? Okay, Glam says she has two girls. Fantastic. So what's happening? I've had parents who ordered the bundle, but they have two girls just like you. So they bought an extra set of doodle books for their girls. So one bundle, um, the complete set of what if cards, but when it came to the doodle cards, they bought two, two bundles. So you can send me a DM. The extra set of doodle um, books cost just 4,000 naira because it's pre-order. Worry mom is saying that ebook has tired her. So, okay, Glam, I can send you a DM afterwards and then we could just take it from there. If we need to talk on phone, fantastic. But I'm here to support you. Remember, on raisinggirls.ng. Hey, worry mom, all of us are two girl clan, all right? Fantastic. So, yes, DM me if you, um, so that we talk about your pre order, all right? So, yes, 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 question, question. So, I'm here to support you. So, here I talk about how we can raise strong, smart, confident girls using biblical principles. If you're like me, we have tried the way of the world and we have tried the way of God. It's safer here. The guarantee is here, but we don't want our children to be doing trial and error. So we want them to do better. So I know nothing other than that Christ works. Christ can fix anything, right? From their self-esteem. I remember when <laughs> you get, you have boys, so I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I know, um, so God can fix anything from helping them believe in themselves again. That thing you're struggling to teach your child with self-esteem, it's amazing what scriptures can make. Let me end by sharing this personal story. It happened this week. So um, one of the things I have encouraged a lot with my daughters is vulnerability about what they're thinking about. So it's not unusual to sit down and, and you know, the battlefield of the mind, um, so in my home, I try to have conversations about negative thoughts. 
So my girls will talk about what they're thinking and then we'll start using the word of God to lace it. So the other day, my daughter was talking about some fearful thoughts that came. I recently lost someone I really cherished and my girls saw me really break down and um, I cried a lot about her death. And so one of my daughters became a bit anxious and she came and sat with me and started saying that, oh, look at all these things that she's thinking and feeling fear. And I started telling her that, look, these are not your thoughts. Satan is trying to sell an idea to you. You cannot buy it. You must hold on to what the word of God says. And she said, mom, how do I do that? And by the help of the Holy Spirit, I just told her, I said, so imagine now, it was actually about the time they were to go have a bath that night. So I said, imagine now that you left me in the kitchen, I'm cooking rice and chicken, and I bought all drumsticks because the girls love drumsticks in particular. I said, and let's say I bought a carton of drumsticks, chicken, and I finished seasoning and cooking the stew and everything. And I asked you to go and have a bath. That by the time you, you're out of the bathroom, there'll be rice and chicken for you. What if while you went in, to have a, in, 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 in there to have a bath, somebody came in, let's say one of the ladies at home with us, walked up to you and said, look, eh, Brianna, mommy said I should tell you that you're not eating for two days. I told, asked them, what would you say? I one of them said, no. Mommy told us in the kitchen that she was cooking rice and chicken. And the other one said, that cannot happen. Mommy told us to go and bathe. I said, exactly. That's how you need to start responding to the devil when he brings ideas about negative stuff. You need to look at him and say, no, the word of God says this about that matter. And I'm standing on it. And we're like, really, mom? I said, yes. The conversation is happening in your head. You can't let the devil speak longer than you do. So when he lands, you land. You tell him, nope, this is what mommy said. I encourage that kind of conversation because I want wholesome building of my children. And these are some of the principles that I've used in the Body Smart Bundle. Raising girls inside out to be ready for what God is calling them to do. You know something? I want you to think about this tonight. There is greatness in your daughter. God can handle her dreams. Your work is to prepare her to step into it. Body, soul, and spirit. I hope you can take that call. Remember, I'm your plug. I'm here to support you. So I know, I know that the word works. And I want to hand it to the next generation of girls. Yeah, we can do it together. So if you're listening to me and you were blessed, Start with the Body Smart Bundle. Order for the Body Smart Bundle. Make sure you're following us on all social media platforms. Instagram, RaisingGirls.ng. YouTube, Raising Girls with Irene Bangwell. On Facebook, Parenting Champions with Irene Bang. Isn't it exciting that the very first name God gave me for this work was Raising, was Parenting Champions. Raising Girls Who Win. That is, they will sail the storm of life and they'll come out on top. Ngozi's victory is to tell us that there's more in our girls, but we have to be ready to walk side by side with the Holy Spirit to make it happen. Worry Mom says it's time for a TV show. Baby, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me. Meanwhile, let me end by saying that I have dogs, though, two dogs. They're always noisy on Friday night. They're noisy every night. I just get to feel it more on Friday night. So my first daughter is turning 10 this year in may and she's been writing her first book you know what the title is this is me when she told me she was working on that book i was touched of all titles she loves herself she says this is me and she talks about different things and when i went through what she's done i saw that her entire existence her entire identity is wrapped around who she is in christ because I know that's where the solid foundation is. Our children's identity cannot be in the kind of house we've given them, the kind of clothes, the vacations, the good schools, their hair. All those things are pecs. The core is who they are in Christ. And when your girls get that part, they're unbeatable. 
10 over 10 is the starting point. If you guys leave me another one hour, we're still here. So I want to thank everyone that came out tonight. I want to thank you. I'm so tempted to losing this head time because uh, the way the thing is feeling in my head, but I'm going to honor myself and complete this presentation today with it intact while saying a big thank you to you for joining me. All right. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. For those watching on YouTube, on Facebook, I'm going to play one more jingle for the book. I look forward to seeing you next week, Friday. You know, we do the date, whether you see flyer or not. I'm here on Friday night, 7 p.m. Because God is counting on us to raise him a warrior generation of girls that will, that will shake the kingdom of darkness. They're not the generation of girls that will be arguing whether they should be sleeping around or not. They are God vessels. They carry divinity on the inside and they're very conscious of it. So thank you for coming out. I'll see you next week, Friday. God bless you. Meanwhile, send me a DM. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So Abimbola says, thanks for this challenge to step up and prepare my girl for the purpose God has for her. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So for, for 10 over 10 girls is beyond. Do you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or what do you want to be in the future? It's about listening for the voice of God per time. And one of my friends says, God doesn't have permanent career. He has assignments. So if he moves her from here, starts here, and takes her here, our commitment is that she will excel and bring the, and bring, the Bible says that, and men will see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. That's it. Our girls will step into positions and opportunities and people will glorify God by the results that they can create. So right now, it is our responsibility to give them the mindset of champions, the habits of champions, and the wisdom of champions. So God bless you. Thank you for coming out tonight. I love you guys, and I love your girls, and I'm committed to working with you to get the best out for your girls. So whatever you do, send me a DM and pre-order the Body Smart Girl Bundle, all right? And let's get biblical sex education out there into the world of our girls. Someone says we're raising a warrior generation of girls. Yes, we are. Ah, the devil didn't see us coming, but we're here. And we're going to upturn so much. Thank you so much. Shizzy Mofos, I'm happy to be here. Sometimes I hit a, a brick wall as to how to train them girls. Keep hanging out with me. And sometimes if you have a question, get into my DM, let's talk, all right? I'm, I'm your plug when it comes to raising girls that God can use, all right? I look forward to seeing you guys next week, Friday. I'm not waiting till next week, Friday, to see you. Get into my DM on pre-order the Body Smart Girl Bundle. And let's start from there. Cheesy Mofo, that could be a good place to start. Pre-order the Body Smart Girl Bundle. I mean, it's so much. It's so meaty. It's so rich. I'm so honored that I could be the creator of the Body Smart Bundle for Girls. All right? See you guys next week. God bless you. Mwah. So I'm going to start with Instagram. I'm going to disconnect Instagram first so that I don't lose my recording. Then I'm going to play something here for my people on Facebook. And um, let me see, let me see, let me see. So Facebook family, I want to appreciate you for coming out, all right? Are you having Enjoy this piece of conversations in your home with your girls. If you are, what's the basis for the conversations? Are you coming from the God perspective or all the things you're picking out outside the, in the world? You do know that we are creations of God and everything about sex is the creation of God. And here's the thing, God has a way he wants the next generation and the next generation and the next generation to learn about sex. God has his principles. God has his standards. And I bet you the supreme that the right way to pass on uh, this principles to the next generation. The question is, what are you telling your children? What the conversation you're having in your home right now, does it uphold the values and principles of God? Or is it the permissive culture that the world is passing to us? If you be a child of God, you ought to find out how God wants you to talk with your girls about sex. You don't know how, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is lay your hands on the Sex Education for Girls Bundle, which is based 100% on biblical principles about raising the next generation of children who love God, fear God, and honor God with their bodies. Click the link below and find a way uh, to get the Sex Ed for Girls Bundle and make sure you open that God-led conversation in your home today. So what happens when you are not providing your daughters with the right sex education 
information. What happens when you are not talking freely about sex? I bet you your daughter is talking to someone else and chances that they're talking to their friend and they're depending on romantic novels, romantic TV shows and social media. How much do you trust those sources? Here is the thing. If your daughter is getting inaccurate information, then it means that they're going to base their decisions on those inaccurate information. And when your daughter makes a wrong decision, consequences always comes. And unfortunately, usually you're part of the consequences of their decisions. So I want to help you. I want to make it easier for you. I want your home to be a place where your child and yourself can talk safely and freely about these issues so that you can help them make or shape the decision-making process for them when it comes to sex-related decisions. So all you need to do is look for the link on this video and look for the sex education bundle for girls that I've designed and get started. Get the spark of amazing conversation going on in your home today.